Okay, so this talk is going to be a very rapid uh, review of continuity. Um, assuming that you are already familiar with the concept of continuity, in the definition of continuity in terms of limit, but, uh, but you may not have seen the epsilon delta definition of continuity. So we'll now construct an epsilon delta definition of continuity in terms of the epsilon delta definition of limit and notice a few more slightly interesting things here. Okay, so we say that a function f is continuous at a point c in the domain if f is defined at c. So, so, so f has to first of all be defined at the point to be, to be able to say it's continuous at so the point. Like, if it's not defined at the point, you cannot talk of continuity. Uh, it also has to be defined around the point, which has to be defined on the immediate left and the immediate right. So one way of saying this, there's an open interval containing c such that f is defined on that open interval. If or if it's defined at and around c, then it makes sense to ask whether f is continuous at c. If, if it's not defined at and around c, it doesn't make sense to ask whether whether uh, it's uh, continuous. So we say it's continuous if, if it's defined at and around c and the limit as x approaches c of fx equals f of c. So this left side here, the limit x approaches c of x, it, for that to make sense, f has to be defined on the immediate left and right, and for this f of c to make sense, f has to be defined at c. So another way of saying this is the two-sided limit, which is just the ordinary limit, we call it two-sided, has to equal the value, or another way of putting it is that the left-hand limit, right-hand limit, and value, all three of them are equal to each other. If just the left hand limit and right hand limit were equal, you'd say the function has a limit at the point, but without knowing whether it's equal to the value, you cannot comment on continuity. Okay, there's a couple other permutations you can have. If just the left hand limit and value are equal, and we don't know anything about the right hand limit, then we say that the function is left continuous at the point. Okay, so left continuous actually makes sense even if the function's not defined on the right. So left continuous, F has to be defined at the point, has to be defined on the immediate left to the point, and the left-hand limit has to be equal to the value. Similarly, right continuous, F has to be defined at the point, on the immediate right of the point, and the right-hand limit has to equal the value. Okay, so these are the definitions. Now I want to write the epsilon delta definition of continuity. So, so the idea is, it's the same as the epsilon delta definition of limit. You know the definition limit x approaches c fx equals l. Now instead of l, you have fc, so you know what the claimed limit is. It's just the value. So you start the same way, for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for all x satisfying 0 less than absolute value x minus c less than delta, we have absolute value fx minus what? Less than epsilon. Well, here you would ordinarily write L, but here the claim limit is L is f of c. So you have to put f of c here. Okay, so sorry, the pens are a little bit different in, but that's fine. So So the definition of continuity basically is the same as the definition of a limit except here where you are writing down what the limit is supposed to be, you just put the value of the function at the point. Now there's another minor change you can make in the definition of continuity from this. So this definition is correct, but often when people write the definition of continuity, they write it slightly differently. They look at this part and they say that you can actually remove this zero less than the zero less than here, you can remove that from the definition. Why can you do that? Well, first let's try to understand why we cannot do that with just the usual limit definition. Okay, the reason why we cannot do that with the usual limit definition is because we don't know anything about the value of the function at the point, uh, whether the function is even defined at the point, what the value is, and if we didn't have the zero less than, in this, then the x would be allowed to be equal to c, and that would allow us to plug x equal to c, and, and since we don't know anything about c, we don't want to allow that. However, in the continuity definition, we do know exactly what's happening at x equals c. At x equal to c, 
this fx minus fc is just zero and so the definition uh, makes uh, sense and and is and is satisfied at c so whether or not c is included or excluded that is whether you have the zero less than or don't have it so zero less than putting it would exclude c and removing this would include c but at c this condition is anyway true so it doesn't matter whether you put the zero less than so you'll often find that people kind of remove this okay so whether you put it or don't put it the definition gives you the definition of continuity so it's redundant it's optional either way okay now i want to talk about a couple more things so continuity on an interval so what for what does it mean for something to be continuous on an interval well it depends on what kind of interval it is so so the first naive thought is that continuity on an interval just means continuity at all points of the interval and that is correct for an open interval however if you have a closed interval so if you have a, a, a closed interval then the boundary points the boundary points of the interval you cannot make sense of two sided limits because the function is not even defined on the on the sort of outside side of the boundary points let me just be a little more concrete here so so yes for open intervals for intervals with boundary points okay we require two sided continuity so we require the usual continuity at all interior points and one sided continuity at boundary points So, for example, if you have an interval, so e.g., if we are on an interval a comma b, you have need continuity at all points on the open interval. A comma B the open interval and uh, we need right continuity at A and left continuity at B okay so We need right continuity at A and left continuity at B. Now you can imagine various other combinations. So you can imagine various other combinations like you can have closed on one and open on the other in that case you need right continuity at the left end if it's closed there it's uh, and nothing on the right end if it's open on the left end and closed on the right end then you need uh, left continuity at the right end and nothing at the left end okay so wherever you have endpoints you have to require appropriate 
one-sided continuity depending on what side. So left endpoint you require right continuity and right endpoints you require left continuity depending on whether they are included or not. Okay. So the, the important thing to note is that at endpoints you cannot talk of two-sided continuity because, because we don't know what's happening outside of the endpoint. Okay, so we have to instead talk of one-sided continuity and uh, and the appropriate one. Okay, but but we still say it's continuous on the interval. Okay, even though at the endpoints it's only one-sided continuity we're talking of, we still talk, say continuous on the interval. Okay.